today, today Apple is going to reinvent the phone. In 2007, Apple released the iPhone. It was the first all-in-one phone, iPad and internet communicator. It was a game changer. By 2011, 35% of adults owned a smartphone. By 2021, it was 85%. Now, 35% of users check it more than 50 times a day. 98% of Gen Z own one, and it's a billion dollar market winner. Fine, look, don't get me wrong. It's a wonderful device. I have one, but I keep it off because it has deadly side effects. That's why Silicon Valley CEOs banned their own children from using it. It's addictive. In my office, I see amazing young minds addicted to smartphones, to social media, likes, notifications, the pleasure. They get hungrier and hungrier, like they're never satisfied, eating eye candy, getting so interested in trivia, trying to get their self-esteem cups filled, trying to get acceptance, but feeling empty inside. That's addiction and dopamine overdose. Look, the smartphone and social media combination is such a winner because it's so addictive through dopamine pleasure. Images, catchy sounds, a ding to say that somebody wants my attention, somebody likes me. Images that are mind-blowing, they're really fantastic, but it's just too much, way too much of a good thing. It's addictive. In the same way that drugs, gambling and porn are addictive, dopamine release in the brain's reward system. This really is selling addiction. Many of us are addicted and you can tell when you start to complain about having less time, less friends and being lonelier. Well, where did your time go? Where did your friends go? How did you get to be lonelier when the population's rising and we're more connected? We're being sold a lie here. Internet addiction eats up your time likes, news feeds, movies, hit series, and very interesting opinion pieces on current affairs. This all smashes your brain with information, image, entertainment overload. It's a recognized psychological disorder. So as a psychiatrist, here's what I think is going on. This all taps into deep human needs. The need to know, to be accepted, to explore and develop an identity, and even that core need to try to find out what life is all about. People think the answer to that question is actually on the internet. This is what leads to people sleeping with their phones rather than with somebody that they love. People waking up to check their news feeds and likes instead of saying good morning to a human being. It cuts off human connection. People even use toilet time to stay connected. They'd rather race home to surf the net rather than surfing the waves or to play out in the streets. Or they'll diligently practice a video game rather than diligently pass college exams. I've seen it in my work and it saddens me. It saddens me deeply. People live life through a three by six inch brick window. They don't experience life. This technology promised us a bigger world, but for some, it's delivered a world about as big as your bedroom. You don't have to leave. Many people don't. Secondhand lives, robbed of identity, life, and real friends. And this is all an addiction sold as a sexy must-have product. I'll quote some studies here. Young adults are more comfortable being online than at a party. That's not my opinion, that's from a study. Young people said that we actually like our smartphones more than we like people. Thanks to smartphones and dopamine, more young adults see less people, go out less, talk less, party less, and have less sex. Yeah, even a core drive like sex is being squashed. Studies show that people have less sex because they're watching screens more. Is that the sort of life we want for ourselves, for future generations? I don't think so. Okay, let's take a look inside the brain. Never before in the history of humankind have we been so absorbed by a tool with such a narrow focus. Our eyes, our ears, they're concentrated on a screen just a few inches away. So our brains adapt. We lose peripheral vision, peripheral hearing. The brain's thalamus shuts out the rest of the world so you don't notice other people even if they call you for dinner. You're not engaged with the real world. Many people share more intimacy with a smartphone than with another human being. Uh, sorry, that's just not right. That's just not how we evolved. 
Thinking becomes convergent and concrete rather than divergent and creative. We lose imagination and our brains adapt to predictable screen algorithms rather than spontaneous real people. But it gets worse. In very heavy users, hey, I'm talking addiction language now, heavy users, the equivalent of drug addicts, the brain's empathy area, the anterior cingulate gyrus, shrinks. Now just think about that. A part of your brain shrinks in response to screen addiction. A part of the brain that we have spent tens of thousands of years evolving to help us get along with each other. In a single generation, it's being pruned back because it's just not being used enough. That's devolution right in front of our MRIs. Less empathy, less ability to engage with people. Screens change our brain chemistry, which changes our feelings. Oxytocin, serotonin, beta endorphin levels fall because we're spending less time together. We feel bad. Social phobia, anxiety and depression, suicide, they rise because we're spending less time together. We feel bad. To get over this nihilism and loneliness, guess what? We turn to addictions for relief. So, because of dopamine, you feel good for a short time, then you go back to feeling bad. That's addiction. Filling a void where friendship should be. More social media, more screens, less empathy, less people interactions, less friends, more loneliness, more depression, more suicide. The biggest rise in suicide is in 10 to 14 year old females, up 300% in five years. 300%. Why? Because impersonal screen interactions suit female aggression. Males give them face-to-face -face physical violence. Females give them social media, screen anonymity. This suits their relational violence. They single somebody out exclude them, start rumors, destroy character, destroy reputation. There's a long list of young females who have killed themselves. It's a tragedy. We're making enemies out of people who could be our friends. That's bizarre. It's all part of the brain damage thanks to screen addiction. One study shows that just having a smartphone close by decreases your ability to think and to pay attention. Well, what do you call that? What do you call mental illness? It's all a form of mild, reversible brain damage. Okay, so this information references over 100 separate studies, all pointing in one direction. Smartphones, social media, they're addictive and they contribute to mental illness. There's not a single study showing that the more that you're on social media, the better your mental health. I went to a child and youth mental health conference. It showed a sharp rise in mental illness since 2007. Why? Sure, divorce rates haven't helped, our risk and tolerance society doesn't help, drugs and alcohol continue to be problems, but none of them became suddenly worse in 2007. There are other possibilities. Maybe somebody spilt an anti-brain chemical in the water system. Maybe there was an alien invasion we slept through. Or maybe it's a virus with gain of function being transmitted through screens. Come on, look at the science. Or is this just going to be another inconvenient truth for us to ignore? So where's the hope? What can you do to change any of this? The hope is in you. You can wake up today and take charge. All that it takes is a decision, a sense of purpose, some practice and some discipline. Here are some suggestions. Okay, firstly, if you're not convinced that you're addicted, try doing without your smartphone and without any social media for 30 days. Then when you get down, anxious, bored and irritable, bingo, you know that you're addicted. After you're convinced, here are eight ideas. Number one, enjoy parties, have fun, do and say things that can't be documented, be spontaneous, free yourself from the tyranny of all that you do and say now. Number two, don't touch your smartphone for the first half hour of every day, then make it an hour, then no entertainment or social media until you've finished work or school, then shut down an hour before sleep. Number three, have a technology-free day once a week. Your brain will actually look for something useful and pleasurable to do. Hiking, friends, you'd be surprised. Number four, turn off for dinner conversation. Disconnect, even if you argue over dinner, you're relating to flesh and blood, not silicon and plastic. People are unpredictable. That's how they're supposed to be. And they're a healthy challenge for your brain. Talking, 
Laughing, just being with them, releases beta endorphins. Number five, exercise. Get into nature without the headphones. Look at the world, listen to it. This releases calm serotonin in your brain. Number six, because screens don't love you back, only people can do that. Talk to someone, get to know them, share time, love and fun with them. This releases oxytocin and trust in your brain. Number seven, people, prioritize them. Being addicted to family and friends, I've never had to treat it. But all of a sudden with a smartphone and social media, you've got less time. People or screens, they both give you dopamine, but choose where you get your dopamine from. Number eight, keep babies away from screens entirely for the first year of life. That's World Health Organization recommendations. So you're sitting there and you're thinking, how the hell am I gonna do that? Well, to do any of this, you wanna have a worthwhile purpose. Love, people, friendship, meaning, truth, usefulness, artistic expression, you choose. See, studies are telling us that young people are miserable at the moment. And some young adults are even trying to sue Instagram for stealing away their childhood. Good luck with that. Say no to marketing psychologists. Say no to having the latest phone. Say no to clicking where they want you to go. Don't listen to media mentors. The hope is with you. You can be boss in your own brain. Like a lot of things, a little bit is okay, but a lot is disastrous. That's addiction. Look, even if you do some of the things that I've listed here, even if the science is wrong and it isn't, you'll be happier and healthier and you won't have to see a psychiatrist like me. Your brain can rewire itself to be mentally fit again or it can continue towards anxiety, depression, and even suicidality. You choose. Choose mental health while you still can.